Hi everyone, you're watching Travel Massive Live. My name is Maria, I'm part of the Travel Massive team. And today we have Sam Mayboom from I Like Local. I Like Local was uh, awarded grants from the Booking Booster program in 2019. It is basically a travel marketplace that uh, creates social impact in local communities in Asia and Africa. We are very excited to learn about all of the journey, all of the challenges on the way, and all of the lessons that was, were learned during the, these past years. So just before I give the word to Sam, let me tell you a few quick notes. This webinar is recorded, so you're gonna receive this recording afterwards over your email. Also, whenever you have any questions, you can use the chat box on your right, and then we'll get back to the questions after San tells her story. Okay, San, how are you? Are you ready to share your story with us? Yes, of course. Awesome. Let me share my screen. Yeah, share. Let me know if you can already see it. Yes, we can see it. Yeah, yeah, wonderful, great. Perfect. Tell us a bit about yourself and then go forward. Yes. Well, it's great I'm being invited to um, host like, the webinar today and share the other local story, how it all got started. Um, challenges, lessons learned, um, everything that we came across during this whole journey. Um, but maybe good to tell a little bit about myself and who I am. So I'm the founder of I Like Local and Impact Nomads. I'm a proud Dutchie, uh, so I'm originally from the Netherlands but left in 2011. Uh, a very passionate traveler, probably like many of you as well, uh, traveled to many countries across the world. Um, lived in various countries as well, India, Brazil, Hong Kong, and currently living in Kenya. Um, since 2015, I'm a mom of three, Luna, Noah, and Faye. Um, I love venturing without a plan. Um, and why? It's really because it brings you in the most amazing situations you couldn't like imagine before. Um, and another like very important element is I'm very passionate about about making a difference in uh, in this world. So how did it all start? It well, it started with my passion for travel and my desire wanting to give back. There was a time I was working as a business consultant, making very long days, um, and I came at a point that I was really thinking, what is what's the purpose and what's my purpose? Um, and I couldn't really give a very good answer to that. So I decided to take sabbatical, like travel for four months. In the meantime, met my current partner. And when I came back, it was just like, okay, shall we just leave and live somewhere else for some time? And that's what we did. So we left the Netherlands in 2011. Uh, first stop was Brazil. And that really gave me the chance to, well, quit my job and start with a blank sheet. Um, I wanted to do a job that I was very passionate about um, and not only passionate about, but also with what uh, creates value for myself, but also for, for, for others. And what I realized during my own, during my own travels what, was that my best encounters were always the encounters with local people. And at the same time, I noticed that many local people were not really benefiting from the tourism money that was coming into that country. Um, so I, I decided, okay, I need to create something around that. Uh, but before I did, I really, um, yeah, did market research. So I spoke to different types of travelers, understanding why they're traveling, what they were looking for. Um, and the outcome of this, this research, like, confirm my own experience. Um, plus it was backed up by, um, by different like travel reports as well. So what we noticed was that more travelers feel like a tourist and seek authentic travel experiences that make a positive impact, but they don't know exactly how to find them or how they can include that during that travel. Um, plus at the same time, based on a report of the United Nations, 
was that for every hundred US dollars spent by travelers, only five US dollars actually stayed in a destination. So what I like also is about is connecting these dots. So we connect travelers with local hosts in Asia and Africa that provide authentic travel experiences while generating a sustainable income for local people. So 100% of the money at these local asks for their experiences are paid to them and we add our fee on top. So our solution provides on the one hand side like a broad range of different types of experiences to travelers and make it very easy and, and convenient for them to find them and leave a positive impact and create these lasting memories that they are looking for. Um, and for the local hosts and local communities, we make sure that they earn a fair wage, provide employment and um, try to provide them training and, and education. So our mission is really to connect people around the world with these local people um, and to really create deeper connections and these lasting memories. We want to engage people and let them immerse into local cultures so that they really understand um, more about the country and, and the people in it. Um, and the third one is empowering people by giving them direct access to the travel market and making sure that they, that they can earn an income. So the type of experiences that we offer on our platform really vary from farm stays, home stays, food experiences, truck and tours, um, art and cultural experiences. Um, so when we launched in 2014, we were one of the first, well, in the travel market that was focused on both authentic and local travel and making a positive impact. But our world is changing. Uh, the way we live, the way we work, the way we travel. Um, so where we maybe were one of the first in the beginning and it was maybe a bit difficult and really targeting the early adopters, which was like a smaller uh, market share, we see over the years that this is increasing. So people are looking for more like experiences. And this is also what we see like in the travel trends, the trends in general, like over the, the last five years, is that people are more focused on like experiential travel and experiences in general, rather than uh, spending a lot of money on, on, on goods. Um, and what does this mean for travel is that um, people are really looking for meaningful and unusual experiences that really set them apart from the pack. Um, they want to like dive into new cultures and really connect with these local people that are there. Another thing is that um, our life is really fun in various, various ways. Um, it's in terms of relationships, it's in terms of like how we work, what time we work, where, when we work, um, life and, and, and culture as well. So it's even predicted that in 2027, 50% of the US workforce is expected to work as a freelancer. So this means for travel that um, uh, like the boundaries between work and leisure diminish. Um, people are getting more self-control over their lives and dare to follow their passions. Um, and people integrate travel more deeply into their daily life. So where maybe in the past we um, traveled maybe once a year and made a big trip we nowadays see that people combine travel and work at the same time at the so-called digital nomads. Um, so this really creates like a, yeah, different opportunities in travel as well. Uh, another trend that we see is that people are becoming more conscious and more aware. Um, and not in terms of like environment, but also in terms of like their their uh, social footprint. Um, and one of the studies from Booking.com showed that 55% of travelers are de determined to make more sustainable travel choices. Um, and that means on locations that people are uh, wanting to leave a positive footprint and making sure that the money that they're spending is spending wisely and reaching the local people. Um, so that's one part. And then 
um, people are more um, uh, more conscious about like what type of transportation they choose and what kind of accommodation they choose um, to, to spend their holidays. Um, and over the years, we see that this, this trend about local travel and also making that impact is picked up by larger um, um, media brands uh, like BBC and Forbes Travel and Leisure, which were just a few that covered our, um, our story. So travel has um, is identified as one of the main industries that can make that difference. Um, it has a huge potential, and these are just some figures that I digged up uh, online to showcase like that that potential. Uh, like in 2018, like three trillion USD was flowing into emerging markets, and um, 9% is the yearly growth rate of arrivals in Asia and Africa. 10% of global GDP is fueled by tourism, and 68% of travelers would like to see their money flow back into uh, local communities. So there is a huge potential, but what you see is that at this moment in time, the impact is mostly like locally um, active. Um, if we look at our own impact thus far, um, is that we helped over like 1,500 local people in 19 countries, on average like receiving 70 euros per booking. Um, and this is one of our hosts in, in Nepal, Rekia, she's running a home cooking class. And with the money that she earns via Isla Local, she's able to provide food and clothes and shelter to the orphan girls that she's taking care of. Just to give you like a, a very practical example of what, what difference we can make. However, um, although this peer-to-peer, -peer, the sharing community marketplace concept is, um, uh, it provides a lot of opportunities, we still see that a lot of people at the bottom of the pyramid are still not benefiting. And um, there are some very um, simple reasons for that. I want is often a language barrier, you no know, internet access, lack of education, not really understanding what are the country, what is the country we're looking for. Um, so we wanted to see if we could like include them as well. So we started a pilot with ActionAid. Um, ActionAid is a worldwide NGO active in 45 countries. Um, really focused on the basic needs of, of um, these type of communities. Um, and together we would like to see if we can create uh, travel experiences that they can provide and that, that we can sell via our platform so that we can really make an impact at scale. Of course, we had a lot of challenges and it's, I think, an ongoing process, especially when you are running a startup, it's never ending and every growth phase will bring its new challenges. Um, so for us, like for me, like in the beginning, it was really how to grow a team without having the budget to hire. Um, I decided to bootstrap the company because I felt more confident to first like um, gain traction rather than telling a story to investors, I was not completely sure if, if it would work at the end. Um, so yeah, that was one of my, my biggest challenges in the beginning. Um, another one is how to grow your conversion with limited marketing budgets. Um, I will come to the learnings uh, as well on the next slide. Um, finding the right people, um, of course it comes a bit with uh, number one as well, but how do you find the right people for your team? What kind of rules do you really need? What's most important? Um, what's the best funding path? And that's something where we are currently in. Um, what I mentioned, we bootstrap, we uh, did like a, uh, a successful crowdfunding campaign, we were granted 100,000 euros by booking.com. All really great, um, but if you want to further grow your company faster and you want to hire more people, um, yeah, in our case, we just need um, a bit more like financial support for that. Uh, another one is uh, best approach for web development. Um, in our case, web development, the website is our product. We need to make sure that it's 
working well, it has the best user experience. Um, but yeah, again, like hiring, like a full time web developer in the beginning doesn't really make sense. Um, so we have been working with either like hiring like freelance developer in the beginning and now like um, making the outsource everything to a company. Um, but yeah, you see challenges there. Um, and uh, yeah, that's still something that we need to overcome. So what are our lessons learned? Uh, I think one really major one, and maybe it's a bit of an open door, but do your research to identify the your market potential. Um, really understand who is your target market, what are they looking for, what problem are you trying to solve? Um, and yeah, and make a case for that before you really start. And then when you start build, build like a, a lean product first and test and based on these learnings, either um, change or um, uh, adjust your product. to Make really sure that it fits. Create a team as soon as possible. So make people, other people enthusiastic. And why I'm saying this, in the beginning, I was really uh, sitting behind my laptop in a cafe or in my home. Um, you really need to get a lot of motivation out of yourself. Uh, every day, it's you who, who needs to make it happen. Um, but when you start sharing your story and people notice like your uh, motivation, your eagerness, and if it resonates with them, uh, it, it really can open uh, opportunities. And for example, with Impact Nomads, um, which we launched like half a year ago, it was a similar story, um, uh, like sharing it with a lot of people. And then somehow uh, people were just approaching uh, approaching us, like how did the country that they want to be part of it? Um, and uh, yeah, I, I really noticed like how much energy it really gives you. Um, uh, yeah, and confidence at the same time. Um, choose people that have passion for your product or service. A very important one. Um, in the beginning, I was sometimes choosing people because they were cheaper, um, but they had less affinity with the product or with the, with the service itself. Um, and although you might think, well, if that person is good and if he's just doing his job, it might be, it might work. Uh, but I notice like the difference when you have people in your team that are as passionate about like the product or service that you're providing. It not only, uh, um, yeah, it, it really gives the energy also for myself to really um, yeah, start looking for new opportunities and to really uh, bring this a step further. Um, when you are an online business and you want to grow your business fast because you are expecting more competitors soon or whatever reason you might have, marketing budget is key. And maybe like 15 years ago, it was possible to, with small marketing budgets, to um, to get like sufficient followers to uh, grow organically, but um, in my opinion or my experience, that has passed. So if you want to grow your traffic and followers fast, I think that's really key. One way to uh, avoid that a little bit is applying for competitions and awards. I think nowadays there are so many um, competitions and awards for either like startups or um, uh, products or companies that do something sustainably. Uh, I would just say, yeah, that's maybe so a bit of time, but it's really worth it. But if you manage to get in, it will give you a lot of PR and free promotion. Another one is find partners that fit your brand. Um, and, mm, it's a little bit, uh, it's not similar, but it, it's, it's in the line of choosing the people that have a passion for your product. Um, so when you gather like people around you or brands around you, you can grow your business um, much faster. And not only in terms of like using them as a third party for selling your, your products or services, but also like mentioning them uh, creating a kind of a movement. And the last one is be aware of your own fears and tackle them because it really can affect the growth of your company or at least the pace of which is growing. 
Um, so I think it's very important to be self-critical and, uh, and identify, um, yeah, when you encounter any of these fears or, um, and, and see if you can find a solution for it. Yeah, so these are one of our partners like Booking.com, Intercontinental with whom we are working, Action and Just Mentioned, Cultural Me, Travel App. Um, and yeah, this is the end of the presentation. I'm really happy to answer any questions that you might have uh, or any thoughts. Um, yeah. Thank you, Sam. Okay, everyone, uh, whatever questions you have, please put them on the chat box. We already have a few, uh, but uh, can we start with how do you choose the experiences that you add on the platform? What is the process? Like, how do you get in touch with them or approve them? Or, you know, do you have a personal contact in any way? Yeah. Um, initially, when we started, it was a very conscious decision to not have like an automated form that people needed to fill in and then with one push on the button it would be live uh, like for example you see with airbnb because we were working with people in developing countries whose language is maybe uh, like english might not be their first language sometimes they also don't know to how to make a text very appealing or what a traveler is really looking for so we want to have that control ourselves um so in the beginning, it was really me doing a lot of research online um, before we launched. So from the moment that I came up with the idea until the moment that we launched, that was around 10 months. Um, so yeah, that was the period that it took us to build the website, to find the experiences. Uh, so we launched with 180 experiences in 10 countries in Asia. Um, and that involved a lot of research of myself and reaching proactively to people. Nowadays, like hosts are finding us. Um, we're working with community-based tourism organizations, NGOs. Um, yeah, it really helps if you are existing for a couple of years, then uh, people can find you much easier. Um, now with the next phase of our growth um, and to be able to to cope with the demand as well is that we decided okay we are going to create like an online application form up to like a certain moment because i think you can never avoid doing the final review making sure that it really ticks all the boxes that you require um so we are very critical about what type of experiences we onboard i think um we became more critical over the years as well um um yeah so that really helps us to speed up that process and allow more like experiences to to become part of our uh, our platform yes and uh, you mentioned during your presentation that uh, it is very important how you spend your marketing budget can you tell us a bit more what do you think are you know the the things that you focus on the most and the most important things that bring you the most return of Invent invest investment. Yeah. For us, it's definitely uh, SEO. Mm. So 80%, or even maybe more, 80% of our bookings come by organic search. So I think it's very important that people can find you um, very easily by using Google. Um, so that's, for us, one of the key things. Um, then I think, yeah, social media, um, but I think that's general in general in, tra in, in travel is it will never be a very um, big traffic driver to your site or letting people immediately convert. It's more awareness creation. And I think nowadays um, you need to be present as, as a brand online um, on social media. I think it's just a must, although it costs a lot of time um, and you might not see the return on investment really immediately in terms of like uh, sales and conversions. Um, yeah, then you will have, well, we are also setting up like an ambassador program. We look into like influencer marketing in the past, affiliate marketing. Um, nowadays, what you see is that a lot of, there, there are so many bloggers out there. Um, I think the market is very saturated and it's, the quality is not always good. Um, so it's very important to be very critical what, what type of influencers you are working. Um, make sure that you choose a person that really fits your brand, what you want to achieve, 
um, and not only a person or a brand that is after the money. Uh, and then it and then it can be like a, a big um, accelerator, although we haven't experienced that yet. Uh, okay, we have a question from Angelique in the chat. Hosteling International Boston wants to know how you think hostels play into local economies. How hostels play into local economies? Yes. What's the role of hostels in the local economies, in your opinion? Well, in my opinion, I think it is not really different than any other accommodation type. Um, although, um, like people who are making use of hostels um, are targeting most of the time more budget travelers. Um, and in, like when I connect to I Like Local, I know that a lot of backpackers like our platform and they like the type of experience, but they don't want to spend money on it because they are on a budget and they have lots of time themselves to, to find these encounters. Um, so yeah, like the, I think ro the role of a hostel is similar to, to, um, a, 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 like a hotel or, um, any other accommodation provider in my opinion. Uh, okay. Lisa is asking, uh, what, who are your travelers? Where are they from? How old are they? Etc. Any demographics yeah. that you can share? Yeah, definitely. So most of our travelers are, um, from US, Europe, US, Europe, Canada, Australia, um, between 25, 34 years old. That's the biggest, uh, biggest group. Uh, many of them are females, um, but I think in general, again, in, tra in, in travel, it's like 80% of bookings are made by, by women, regardless if they are solo travelers or traveling with a partner. Um, uh, yeah, so that's that's our um, main main group. So very conscious travelers, also travelers that have travel experience. Um, sometimes I get the question, um, also like here in Kenya. Oh yeah, um, is the Kenyan are the Kenyans themselves like interested in doing these type of experiences? And I think there is a kind of a maturity, a cycle in uh, in travel. So when people have access to travel for the first time, they have different needs than people who already travel extensively. Um, for example, when I was living in Hong Kong, that was uh, 2014, 2015, I started looking into the Chinese market because I knew like it's a very big market and they just uh, had access to, tr to travel. But um, a lot of travel agencies or travel experts I spoke to, they said no, uh, most of them at this moment in time are interested to travel to Singapore or Hong Kong for like a shopping experience or they want to have all-inclusive resorts. So it's completely different than what we are targeting. Uh, we are really targeting people who would like to go a bit deeper, who would like to have control over their travel planning. Um, so, but it's interesting to see that like in the last one and a half years, we get more um, requests from travel agencies who are catering to more travelers that are looking for more luxury and more convenience, that even their clients are looking to more immerse into the local culture. Awesome, we have a, a quite long question from Eleanor. Uh, if you want to open your chat box, maybe it will be easier for you also to read through. Oh yeah, through. Me... Yes. I think I can close this sharing, right? Yes, you can stop the sharing. Yeah. So Eleanor is saying your statement that locals earn 100% of the money they ask for is interesting because it does not disclose the gap between the price charged and the amount paid out. Are you having any challenge from your customers wanting to know the percent or amount your organization takes for admin, etc.? Um, yeah, it is like uh, uh, we get some of the questions. Okay, if you say 100% of the money that they ask for the experience that you are paying out, how do you then earn your money? Um, so we then share like, okay, we add our fee on top. So we only charge like on one side, like in this case, the traveler, where a lot of peer to peer marketplaces are taking from both sides. Um, 
there that, that creates a kind of a challenge in the business model itself um, as you can see most of the experience on our website are not that expensive so we need to have a lot of volume in a, be, a, being able to uh, be, be break even at the end um, so that's still something that we are twisting and turning but um, most travelers really understand that um, that we charge something for the work that we do or, or to make the, or to facilitate the connection between um, like a traveler and a host. Um, so no, we, we don't get many questions about, okay, how is the price build up and what, what's the fee that you are taking? No. Okay. Uh, Daniel is asking, are there any stories that you can share on how tourism has impacted specific hosts and uh, where this has been? Uh, yes, uh, we have one um, at uh, Didi. Um, he's living in one of the slums or informal settlements here in Nairobi, in Kenya. Um, he used to be like a, a car washer, um, um, but he, which was great, like he found a way um, that he thought, oh yeah, somehow like foreign people or people are interested in learning more about like our life and how we live and how we survive. And um, so we decided to start working with him. And I know that uh, they call it slum tourism, which I, I don't really like to use that word. And there might be some bad um, connotation about it, uh, but it really depends like how, how you organize it. Um, so in his case, we really started looking into what can be the benefit for the community in a larger perspective. Um, and in his, uh, yeah, and with the money that he earned, like just to imagine like people in the slum here in, in, in Kenya, they maybe earn like four US dollar a day. Um, and then suddenly when hosting a group of like three to five people, they can suddenly like earn 100 USD uh, for just like two hours. So it makes a huge impact for these people. And he was really able to pay school fees for, for his daughter and for his niece. Um, yes, so that's that, I think that's a very concrete example. I'm pretty sure there are a lot more stories. Uh, ben is asking, did you have problems with local hosts, uh, complaints about how they treated the guests or anything like that? And uh, another question, how does their onboarding looks like? Yes. Um, no, we never had really bad experiences with hosts treating um, travelers not correctly. Um, so we, we, yeah, thus far, um, we never had like any uh, security issues or um, like bad experiences in terms of quality. Um, we also not pick people from the streets and tell them okay maybe this is a great opportunity for you to start like offering experiences um so we do require that they they have some kind of experience that they really know what they are talking about um so we have we have like strict guidelines that they that they that they need to meet and um uh, various criteria so we always like ask for like some reviews we help them call with them but also based on how they fill in form you can see if someone really understands what he or she is talking about and sometimes we get requests and they are uh, they are just like uh, sending one line i want to become a host or i want to take people around the Taj Mahal um and then you you can always say okay this is this is not really the type of people that we are looking for um we are aware that like the more we grow, the higher the chances we might encounter these kinds of experiences. Um, but with partnerships like ActionAid, for example, um, that's something that we would like to further grow and explore. Um, we, we cover a lot of quality um, assurance, safety issues uh, with them by like partnering with uh, like a, a, a dedicated partner. Um, also sharing behavior guidelines or it's not only like the host who can treat a person maybe badly but it's also a traveler who could be rude 
or not sometimes not even consciously, but just not being aware about like certain sexual um, habits. Awesome. Is anyone else having any other questions? Please put them in the chat box. Um, Lisa, I haven't forgot about your question, but before we end up with, you know, the future plans and uh, etc. Do you want to share, because we were very excited on Travel Massive, we were very excited about your part of the Booking Booster program. So do you want to share a little bit how, how did that go? What did you learn from it? How, how exactly did you uh, get the grant? Um, yeah, so it was, uh, it was interesting. We applied for the second year um, and I just gave birth to my daughter uh, in November, end of November. And I think the application closed the first of December. And I saw this um, email coming in asking, oh yeah, no, just about the booking booster, that the, the final days that you could apply. And I was telling to, to my, my colleague, I said, shall I apply or just leave it? I said, oh yeah, why not? I, I just applied. So I filled the application form and then left it. And then we got like uh, the invitation to, so they have several rounds. Um, we got the invitation to join on an interview. Um, and um, yeah, that all went really well. So then we were invited to come to Amsterdam in May last year for three weeks. Um, uh, well, it was very well prepared, uh, very well organized. Um, and all the trainers and uh, there's so much knowledge within booking itself so we had full access um, to any of their like employees um, to build towers like an investor deck that we had to present at the end of the three weeks under the pitch and based on that they decided oh who get a grant who doesn't get a grant how much you would receive um, and actually, I thought like, okay, that's it. Like it's three weeks, and so you either get something or you don't get anything. Um, but even after the program finished, you have you get a mentor like for a year. They have like a kind of booking cares. It's like an, an internal, a volunteering platform where we could like add any of our requests that we had. So it could be challenges in terms of um, um, like IC or marketing or advertisement or whatever, we can just pose the question there and they are going to look internally, um, yeah, which which person would be a good fit to, to help us with that challenge. So I think that's uh, a really, really good uh, resource. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm very, uh, very happy that we that mm -hmm. we had that experience. That's awesome. So, uh, Tell us what are your plans for the next year or the next, I don't know, three to five years. And more specifically, do you plan to expand in other continents as well? Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so our, our main, like my vision is really um, to make that impact at large scale work. And I know it's challenging, um, but I think with like the now starting the pilot with ActionAid and we just applied for grants of one US, uh, one million US dollars that we get, 90% sure, um, which is a, a really great like boost and it gives a lot of confidence that people are willing to look for different ways how travel can contribute um, on a large scale. Um, yeah, and, and I, I know for sure that we will face challenges uh, with, this, uh, with this group as well. Um, but that's, that's the ultimate goal, and that means that, that we want to grow our team further, um, that we are looking for investments, investor opportunities. Um, uh, yeah, I think these are, are, are one of the main, the, the main like, drives that we, and motivations that we have. Awesome, and how, <laughs> How can the Travel Massive community help you? Yeah, we w really would like to create a movement. Um, so that's with the ambassador program. Uh, we are looking for, for partners to partner with if you are like a photographer or an influencer, a travel brand that's it, that, that 
things, okay, this could be interesting for our clients, um, travel brands that are um, maybe not in the tourism experience space like we, but like um, it could be like an adventure brand that really creates great products or um, any, any, yeah, a any kind of initiative that has like a similar mindset um, of, yeah, making that difference via travel, really giving people great, like, authentic travel experiences. Um, please reach out. Awesome. Uh, anyone can uh, just follow San on Travel Massive. I shared her profile on the chat, but also when I share the recording with uh, you guys, I will send you her contact as well. Uh, Sam, thank you very much. This, this was very interesting and very insightful. And we are rooting for you to get that grant and, you know, to reach all of your goals and to be even more successful because we also really think that your product and what you're doing is really impactful and really meaningful. So we are always uh, here to help you. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity. And um, yeah, hopefully we will be in touch again. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you have all. A, have a great day. Yeah, have great holidays as well. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye.